Well, let me start uh, with some questions about free will. Um, there has uh, been uh, some recent work in neuroscience and in social psychology, which many scientists have interpreted as making trouble for traditional belief in free will. And so I wondered if you could tell us a bit about some of this research, both the neuroscientific research and the uh, social psychological research, and um, tell us your thoughts about it. What does it show? There's a lot of really fascinating work uh, going on in, in, in both, as you say, neuroscience and social psychology. You can think of it as um, trying to get under the hood of how our, our, our brains work and uh, in help shaping our behavior. Uh, and people, of course, have known for centuries um, that uh, the, the activity of our brains uh, is relevant to how we choose and decide. People have known that if you get hit over the head with a hard, heavy object, um, that's probably going to affect your subsequent behavior, may, yes. maybe cause you to become unconscious or worse. Uh, beginning in the early 80s, a scientist by the name of Benjamin Libet uh, devised a series of interesting studies that people thought had a very surprising, shocking implication. Uh, the studies are very simple. You're, you're asked to sit in a room and um, to, to perform a simple behavior. So you, you, you already decide ahead of time what your behavior is going to be. Maybe just lift your right index finger um, and wiggle it. And you're asked to do this within a 20 to 30 second interval of time, but crucially, you're not to plan ahead of time exactly when you're going to do it. The, the goal is for you to spontaneously decide, right, when, when you shall wiggle your finger. And while you're waiting uh, for the, the impulse to do this, you're watching a clock fixed on a wall that's not an ordinary clock. It has a very fast moving dial that goes a few times per second. <clears throat> and you're asked to uh, notice the, the first moment at which you felt the impulse to, to go ahead and wiggle your finger and to notice where the dial on that clock was at that moment. Uh, and of course, um, observation of the clock, uh, light signals, all that takes a bit of time. Scientists know how to adjust for that, right? To try to zero in on when you felt was the actual moment at which uh, you felt this urge to wiggle your behavior. And then the surprising thing was that for almost a half second prior to your, the time you said you felt the impulse, there was a steady buildup of electrical activity in the cerebral cortex um, that they call the readiness potential uh, that some scientists interpreted it as the brain preparing f to trigger the relevant behavior. Okay. And so the interpretation that Benjamin Libet put on this was that your brain had decided before you consciously had decided uh, uh, to, to go ahead and move your finger. Um, and so what you, your, your sense of impulse was actually a product of an unconscious, subpersonal, physical uh, decision event. Um, and so it, it, if, if that's the correct interpretation, and crucially, if Benjamin, uh, the, the Libet type experiment um, generalizes to the kind of decision making we make naturally out, outside of experimental context, then the implication would be that we are deceived when we think we autonomously, consciously decide when to act. It's somehow encoded in unconscious brain processes.